As oil price dips amid COVID-19 pandemic, stakeholders, elder statesmen, economics, among others who matter in society are calling for diversification of the Nigerian economy. They clamor for fast-tracked investment in the agricultural sector in order to boost internally generated revenue and create employment for young people. You might say a little too late, but our focus on this episode of One on One on Plus TV Africa will be Nigeria's agricultural sector and, of course, the impact of COVID-19 to the sector. My name is Elsie Godwin. Joining us virtually is the Managing Director of Farm Crowdy, Kenneth Obiajulu. Thank you for speaking with us, Mr. Biajuru. Yeah, thank you for having me here. Okay, so would you say the agricultural sector has been negatively or positively impacted by this pandemic? Um, I mean, um, depends on, on what side you're looking at. But I mean, as with every business in the world, um, most businesses have been adversely affected by um, this pandemic. So, yeah. Mm. So, what are the, um, should we start from the negatives first? What are the negative effects so far? Well, I mean, um, areas around um, food being available and accessible becomes um, super, super critical. Um, as you know, most of what is produced in Nigeria is um, predominantly done in the northern part of Nigeria. And if there's a lockdown, the question becomes how are we able to move um, stuff from areas of high concentration to, to demand markets like the like the Southwest. So um, it's been super, super difficult moving stuff um, down from the, the north down to the south. That's on one hand. Second hand, um, we've also seen how um, farmers, this is where the peak of our farming season, and um, critical inputs like seeds, fertilizers, and crop protection products um, become very, very difficult for farmers to access. You know, which in turn might put us in a very, very uncomfortable position sometime next year. So it's 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 a bit of um, a challenge, uh, but I, I think uh, it's had um, an adverse effect on on um, the agricultural sector. Mm. And on the positive side, I think um, um, businesses are now becoming more creative and innovative about distribution. Businesses are now beginning to adopt um, technology, even in um, distribution, logistics-related uh, businesses are beginning, beginning to rethink their strategies around um, how do we connect um, farmers to the demand, how are we able to connect um, individuals like myself and yourselves to um, businesses that provide food to us and all of that. So in general, um, it's, it's on both sides, but I'm tilting towards the adverse side more. Oh. Hmm. Let's talk about um, transportation now of um, this um, farm produce. What strategy have you noticed um, your, your people have deployed to ensure that um, at least it gets to people like us, like you have said? Okay, so basically it, it, it starts from even the aggregation of um, the commodities themselves, right? Um, basically, it's, we need to be able to ensure that we are um, picking up commodities directly from the smallholder farmers closest to where they, they reside or closest to where their farms are. And then um, through technology, we've been able to integrate with um, um, big companies that have capacity to be able to um, pick from our aggregation centers and then move straight down to the southwest. Um, a couple of these um, digital um, enabled businesses have um, permits to be able to move from from one point of the country to the other. So um, a decision that we made last year as a business was um, if we don't have core competencies around uh, distribution and logistics, let's partner with um, another business that is tech enabled and has the capacity to be able to meet these needs. I think that integration um, has given us an advantage even during this period to be one of those businesses that can easily plug into um, logistics structures, transportation structures that's, that work for, for us as a business. So I think a lot of other businesses are also beginning to, to do the same. Mm. So even with this um, um, structure that you already have and adding technology and digital, there's still clearly an increase in pricing. Why is this so? Well, because it starts, that's the natural law of demand and supply, right? Um, when supply is limited, then um, I mean, and the demand is, is exceedingly high, then obviously you're going to have a problem. So, um, like I keep telling people, food security is in four levels, availability, accessibility, fit for use, and sustainable. So food can be available and it's not accessible, right? Accessibility means it is available at the 
got uh, favorable prices and it's affordable, right? Um, affordability is a function of um, how much volume is available at a particular point in time and what is the ease, you know, of, of getting these commodities. If it's difficult to get commodities, um, obviously the prices are going to go up. So it's, it's a typical excess um, demand situation that is at play here. Mm. So how would you rate food security in Nigeria? So it's, it's, it's always been um, a critical conversation, right, around food security. Because for any nation to, to attain that level of security, it means that you need to have um, ticked the boxes on all, for, all four parameters or components of food security. That is, food is produced with the best techniques and the production is is um it um, provides more availability right it's um, readily available um secondly is accessible it can be produced and it is not available right so the question that we ask ourselves is how can we ensure that when it is produced it is assessed assessed at the right prices you know and the third thing around um, food security is even when it is available and it is accessible um is it fit for consumption is it fit for use we have people that have um, special requirements and needs, you know, um, diabetic patients, um, patients with special needs. Um, what is being produced? Does it meet with specific nutritional requirements and value? Um, have we been able to fortify foods for, for um, people that don't have access to three square meals a day? Can they have their um, portion of bread and ensure that the flour that was used in producing the bread is fortified with essential vitamins and minerals. You know, that's the fit for use um, um, imperative there for food um, security. And the last thing is, all these three things, are they sustainable year in, year out? You know, so for, for Nigeria, we still find ourselves in a situation where uh, some of these things are, are not um, um, as they should be. Um, food might be available, but some, in some places it's not accessible. Um, food is accessible in some places, but in some other places is not fit for use. And um, a lot of times all of these things are not sustainable enough. So we, there's a lot that we need to do as regards um, food security. Hmm. Let's look at the situation at hand. Now, knowing that people need to eat even during the lockdown, are farmers categorized as essential workers in Nigeria yet? So um, it's, it's, very, it's very vague, right? Uh, because by... Um, the standard classification, right? Um, people in the food space are, are declared as um, essential service workers, right? Um, in some states like um, Play Two, for example, they've declared that their farmers are essential service workers. But declaring that they're essential services um, or they're essential service workers doesn't mean that um, you have been able to provide the required um, supports needed by farmers. In other parts of the world, farmers are declared first as um, the people that need to critically be supported in times like this. Because um, when it comes to food security, right, and even in a nation like Nigeria where we follow the, um, the rainy season and dry season calendar, we're at the peak of our cultivation. I think um, at this point, um, what the government should be focused on is ensuring that all the required inputs, all the required credit facilities for, for the farmers to be able to get back to their lands, all the, um, while they are compliant with um, COVID regulations, right, all of the support required is, is made available to the farmers in forms of inputs and all of those things. Uh, but um, I, we haven't seen a categorical um, categorization of farmers as essential um, workers, but um, we know that everyone in the food space um, is is categorized as such, but there's there's a need for us to to do more in that regard to ensure that they are well protected and supported in this in this. Mm. So there is an opinion um, saying that if care is not taken, 2021 for us in this part of the world will be very difficult when it comes to providing food for people. Um, what can we do to ensure that that is not the case in 2021? I mean, it's um, it's not rocket science, right? It's um, the 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 fact that um, production happens um, at a certain time in Nigeria. Production happens um, at a certain period shows that um, the, the the supply of commodities is a function of what has been planted the previous year, right? So, case in point is what we are having now was as a result of the decisions of production players last year. So it means that what will be supplied for next year is a function of what is happening this year, right? So if we don't do the right things now, 
then um, it's it's not rocket science. It will happen, right? Um, so the question is, how can we play? How can we ensure that um, even with the limited resources that we have, we're able to get the best yields possible. We're able to increase farmer productivity um, to a larger extent. We're able to reduce post-harvest losses um, to a larger extent. We're able to have uh, connect farmers with um, finance um, to the best way possible. And most importantly, when farmers are done cultivating, how are we able to connect them to markets as against uh, just having farmers have tomatoes that would um, rot in, in their farm. So it's, 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 it's super imperative at this point for us to be able to put all these things into consideration. But yes, if we don't do the right things now, then we might, we might find ourselves in a very uncomfortable position by 2021. Hmm. Talking about doing the right thing, where are we as regards using modern technology for farming? <laughs> We're, we're, we're getting there, right? There's still a lot that can be done, right? Um, you look at productivity levels um, um, and you average it out across um, a couple of other countries within Africa. Um, for example, the average yield for cassava farms or for a hectare of um, cassava farm in Nigeria is between 12 and 15 uh, metric tons per hectare. But in some other parts of the world, um, you have a situation where um, the yields are between 20 and um, 25 uh, metric tons per hectare. You know, you look at post-harvest losses on some areas, you know, in Nigeria, it's, it's much higher, you know, than other parts of the world. So I think um, there's a lot that needs to be done around mechanization, use of tractors. There's a lot that needs to be done in the use of drones for the monitoring of health of the plants. There's a lot that needs to be done um, around um, so many areas that uh, technology can actually support remote sensing, weather forecasts, things as simple as weather forecasts that can predict or can recommend when to apply fertilizers and crop protection products as against applying these things and then the next day the rain falls and then it washes everything out. You know, it reduces the productivity of the farm. So little things as like this can actually go a long way. Hmm. So before I let you go, your business play a very key role in connecting investors to the agricultural sector. Um, looking at the pandemic and where we are now, would you say it's a good time to invest? I mean, it's always a good time to, to invest. Um, you know, the, the principle around investment is that um, when the market um, crashes at um, a rate like this, the best time to invest is now because everything falls to, to the base. But more importantly, um, you look at businesses that can also provide the basic requirements of any human being, food, clothing, and shelter, right? You can't get it wrong. Um, but um, even um, um, there's been some uh, people have talked about, yes, you can, you can buy clothes today and decide not to buy for the next one year, right? You can pay your house rent and stay in your homes today and decide that and you're safe for the next one year. But food is a requirement that goes in day in, day out. You can fast, but you have to break, right? So there has never been um, a good time to invest in agriculture, in, in the food business as now. Um, this is an opportunity for individuals to be able to rethink their investment strategies around including um, more in, um, including more investments across agricultural portfolios as against um, the standard financial instruments that they're used to. Thank you for your time, Mr. Obiagelo. Thank you so much. Awesome. It's time for a quick break, but when we return, we'll be joined by another key player in the industry.